Hey guys, welcome back. So for today's video, I wanted to do something a little different, a little fun, and I wanted to show you guys some products that I used to absolutely hate, but now have fallen in love with. And I think when we first try a product and we hate it, like it just goes all wrong, it throws off your day, but then you think, well, I bought it, so I might as well use it, or let me try it a couple more times. And when you start to really like the product or figure out how it works, it kind of almost makes you feel guilty. Like, oh, I bashed this product and now I love it. Like I'm such a hypocrite, you know? So if you wanna see some products that I used to hate with a passion, but now love, then keep watching. Okay, first let's start out with skincare. Now, I saw this product, it had AHAs in it, it gives you a really beautiful glow. I was totally intrigued by this product. And then when I got it, I used it, it was awful, it was terrible. But then I kind of switched how I used it and I really am loving it right now. So it is the Elemis Superfood AHA Glow Cleansing Butter. It looks like this. And you can see I've been digging in. Um, so it smells very neutral. I wouldn't say there's a fragrance at all. So when I first saw this product, they advertised it to where it's kind of like a cleansing balm. It'll remove your makeup and give your skin a beautiful glow and this and that. And so I first tried this as a cleansing balm because the directions even say massage into dry skin and rinse. Oh God, it was such a nightmare. It was like trying to remove concrete off my face. I don't know if it was just, it's a super thick product, like a cleansing balm, but I don't know if having a full face of makeup underneath just made it harder for the makeup to break down. I don't know, it was such a mess. It was so hard to remove. I hated this product instantly. Like it took me an extra five minutes to wash my face, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have to scrub so much harder, when you have to work so much harder to remove your makeup. And then afterwards, I didn't even notice a glow on my face. So this product was such a bust for me. And I just said, I'm not using it anymore. And after about two or three weeks of it sitting on my bathroom counter, I thought, you know what, let me try it again, but I'm gonna use it in a different way. I'm gonna use it as a cleanser. So what I did is I removed all of my makeup with a cleansing balm and then put a little bit of this and used it as a cleanser. And that made such a huge difference for me. My skin looked really glowy afterwards and I really, really fell in love with it. So if you decide to try this product, I would use it more as a cleanser than a cleansing balm because it doesn't really do that well of a job removing your makeup, in my opinion. Next up is hair. I have several hair products. So the first item is the Kerastase Discipline um, Complete Anti-Frizz Care. Now, when I first tried this product, it's it's a very lightweight product. It almost feels like you're spraying water on your hair, but I wanted to try it by itself and it didn't do anything. So I was like, well, what the heck? You know, it says anti-frizz. I was still kind of frizzy. So then I decided, well, let me pair it with the blow dry cream that's in the line. And my hair was so greasy and so heavy. And normally if I just use the balm and a leave-in conditioner, it doesn't do that. So I couldn't figure out this product. It took me a few tries and I don't know, long story short, I was pairing it with the wrong products. So I decided to try this with just an oil. So the way I use this so that it works for my hair is I get out, I'm toweled dried hair, I spray this all over, 
And then I will apply my lighter cream or my oil and put it just mid shaft to end and blow dry my hair and it works so well. For me, I find this to be more of a detangler than a styling product. And the description on the website and kind of how you use it to me was described more as a styling product, but I like it better as a detangler. So this is something I now use every single day. I love it. And it's just, I love that it's lightweight as well. So if you're looking for a good detangler, check this one out. Next up is this Orbe Gold Lust Pre-Shampoo Intensive Treatment. So if you don't know what this is, this is part of their Gold Lust collection. So the Gold Lust line is designed for those who have fried hair over processed hair, basically hair that needs love, right? It needs a lot of protein, it needs a lot of conditioning because your hair is damaged. And when they launched this, I was expecting it to be a mask and it does work similarly to a mask. However, you put this on dry hair before you get in the shower and then you shampoo and condition as normal. And when I first tried this, I hated it. I was like, what is the point of this? It, why not just use a mask in the shower instead of your conditioner? Like, it really didn't make a difference in my hair. I didn't feel a difference, notice a difference, nothing. Like it was kind of a dead. So I felt like it was a waste of time. And then I tried it again and again and it wasn't working. And I was like, well, what the heck? Cause this is expensive. So the directions say to saturate dry hair from mid shaft to end, just skip the scalp, leave it on for 10 to 20 minutes, wet your hair and then follow with your favorite Orbe shampoo and conditioner. Okay, fine. It wasn't working. Now, one thing that I discovered was, so it's a cream. It's, it's very much like a balm. And then when you work it in, when you warm it up in your fingertips, it almost goes from like a balm to kind of like an oil consistency. Well, the trick to this is you don't just scoop it out and apply it to dry hair like the directions say. You almost take the balm, warm it up in your hands like you would coconut oil and when it transforms into an oil, then apply it to the hair. That made the biggest difference. So once I figured out how to use this product, I love it. I use it about once a week, but I'm just surprised that they don't say to warm up the product in your hand before applying it to your hair. So I don't know, but I really like this. I will use this instead of a mask once a week. It works great. And the next hair product that I have is also from Orbe. It is called Soft Lacquer Heat Styling Spray. And what to say about this product? So this product is a really unique styling product. I would say it is more of a fashion show runway product than it is for everyday use. So this product is designed to not only be a heat styler, but it's also designed to give you high shine. So when you apply this to your hair, your hair is so shiny, it looks like glass. It's beautiful. If you are somebody who doesn't like to do detailed work when it comes to styling your hair, this product is not for you. Now, when I first tried this product, I was expecting it to be like a normal heat styling spray. So I just sprayed it all over my hair and oh my God, I started to panic. My hair was so sticky. Like it felt like somebody sprayed bubble gum all throughout my hair. My hands were sticky, like it was a mess. And I was like, well, I'm running late for work. You know, I don't know what to do. So I just flat ironed my hair. A lot of the stickiness went away because when the heat hits the product, it 
takes away the stickiness and you're left with this beautiful glass like finish on your hair stunning but you literally have to use this product section by section and then when you go back and use your hot tool your flat iron and curling iron you have to make sure from root to end that you hit every single part of that hair strand otherwise you will be left with sticky hair it's no bueno but the end result is so gorgeous i love this product so once i figured that out yes it is super time consuming but once i figured that out i really really love this product but i will say you know even in between sections you're washing your hands and drying it with a towel because your fingers are so sticky even my stylist feel the same way but the end result is so pretty so i really love this product now that i know how to use it but it did take me a hot minute to figure it out so be warned if you decide to try that one okay so let's go into makeup next i have several items first item that i hated when i first tried it was a cult favorite for everybody actually it is none other than the milk hydro grip primer i know i know everybody raves about this but when i got it i hated it i thought it was terrible it was so thick and it was so sticky it didn't glide anywhere on your face and i felt like i had to use way more product than a normal primer so it really turned me off for quite a while and then once summer hit, I ran out of my normal primer and this was the only one I had. So I was kind of stuck using it. I will say I do have to use two to three pumps when I do my face, which is probably a lot, but I have dry skin. So I need to make sure I coat everything. But I noticed from using it in the summer, like my makeup did not budge at all. It was sweat proof. It was work proof it was so good and quickly after a few uses i really fell in love with this product as you can see there's not much left but this has become one of my go-to primers every single day so love this one the next item is a little bit unique i don't think people talk about this as much anymore if at all so years ago when YouTube was just getting started, when there was just a few beauty YouTubers, I was doing freelance makeup for a lot of weddings and photo shoots and stuff like that. And the hot item in the beauty community was an airbrush gun. And at the time you had two brands to buy from. Either you bought a Dynair airbrush gun or you bought a Tem2 airbrush gun. And that really was like, you are a professional. Like that was kind of what everybody asked for, everybody wanted. It was like, you know, having it all. So I wasn't making much money at all. I really wanted the Dunyer one, but I just couldn't afford it. So I ended up going with the Temp2 airbrush. And when I first got it, I was like, yes, this is it. My career is gonna take off. And I hated it. I hated this airbrush gun. I felt like it was way more time consuming. Yes, the end result was beautiful, but it just took forever, forever. And I just, I didn't like it. And this is what the gun looks like. I still have it to this day. Mine's like 15 years old. Um, so, and it, you buy these pods, they had highlight, blush, bronzer, and foundation shades. You just take the back off so that it looks like this, and you just clip it into the gun, and then when you turn it on, you just pull back, and that's how the product comes out. Now, to release it, you just push the button, and for a while, I just heated this gun it was so time consuming and I felt like I could do a liquid foundation application a lot faster and get as good of a result as I could with an airbrush gun. So this poor airbrush gun has sat in my drawer for years and years and years and it just never got used. And eventually I decided to play around with it again and I really 
fell in love with how it works, the application, the end result. When I bought this, this was way back in the day when you can buy the pods, which come in boxes like this. You could buy them at Sephora. Sephora, I don't even think carries Temp 2 anymore, but I really started playing around with it again. And I've really fallen in love with it. I don't know if I was just very young and didn't have the patience to learn something new when I was already kind of working on my career back then, or if I just developed more patience over time, I don't know, but I really love this and it's so pretty. This is a brand new one, which is why the sticker's on it, but it's so easy to use and I just, I love it. I think it is such a good purchase and I'm so glad I held on to it for all these years. The next item is the Dior Dream Skin Cushion Foundation. I know I talked about this in a couple of my recent videos. When I first got this, I didn't like it at all. I thought the coverage was okay. I thought the end result wasn't that great. It was really hard for me to get a flawless finish and an even complexion. And I know this isn't a full coverage product, I knew that going in, but I just could not figure out why so many people are loving cushion foundations and it looked terrible on me. It was just not great, there were, it was streaky, it was just, it was all bad. So I kind of was like, mm, no, nope, I'm going back to my full coverage beat because that's what I love. And I was like, okay, girl, you spent $80 on this freaking cushion foundation like you're gonna have to make this work somehow and after trying several different ways to apply this I finally found a way that works for me so instead of using the sponges which I've cleaned this one a bajillion times or a brush the best way for me to apply this and get beautiful coverage is with a beauty blender. And I have to say I think cushion foundations are gonna be really in this summer because it gives you such an even complexion. It makes your skin look beautiful, but natural. And it's so easy. Like if you go about your day and you rub a little bit off or it transfers to your mask, like it's not a huge noticeable difference, right? It's, it just gives the skin such a beautiful, beautiful look. And I love wearing this on my new makeup days love it it's perfect for running around all day when you just need to even out your skin tone and have a little bit of coverage but nothing crazy this is so good so i have completely fallen in love with this one 100 the next item that i hated when i first got was the ysl 3d all over glow powder so it looks like this it's really really pretty it's kind of like a peachy gold and it's got some shine to it and when I first got it I was like okay well it's probably one of those like you can kind of see it's very highlightery it's probably one of those where when you apply it to your skin with a sponge you really don't get the glitter it's not going to be that that intense right no so it said all over powder. So the first thing I do is I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to set my whole face with it. Girl, it was so, I looked like a freaking disco ball. It was no bueno at all. And I was like, well, how can they call it like an all over glow powder? Like it's not really for all over. And I just, I couldn't really figure out where to put this so that it wasn't obnoxious. I tried it under my eyes, that was all bad. After playing around with it for a little bit, I found that the best use for this powder is down the nose, center of the forehead, center of the chin, your cheekbones, basically where you highlight. And since figuring that out, I don't know why it took me so long, but since figuring it out, it is so beautiful. I like this for days when I'm really not wearing my makeup or I have a very um, lightweight foundation. So the Dior Cushion Foundation or the Guerlain Foundation that I love, 
and I just dab a little bit in my highlight sections, boom, I'm out the door. No setting powder, no concealer, nothing, but it just adds a natural highlight that's not too overwhelming. So I really love this one and I use it all the time. Even when I go to work during the week, I love it. And the last item is not really brand specific, if you will, but just more in general. So for years and years and years, I thought setting sprays were a gimmick. I have to admit it, I thought they were a gimmick. I'm like, it's just another way for a brand to sell a product. How can a liquid being sprayed onto your face hold your makeup in place all day? Like, they're just stealing people's money, right? And at the time, years ago, Fix Plus was really the only setting spray that was out. There really wasn't another setting spray that everybody used, everybody talked about. And for, since then, after trying that, it was just terrible. So it wasn't until probably about three years ago that I really got into setting sprays. And the first one that I tried was the Morphe setting spray. And at first with this one, it was almost so light because it's a mist that I was like, okay, well, it's still just a gimmick. You know, it's not really doing anything. But then I really noticed a difference in how my makeup wore throughout the day. I'm not having to do touch-ups throughout the day or anything like that. And the only thing I had changed at the time was adding a setting spray. So since then, I've fallen in love with setting sprays. I love, love, love the Morphe one. And I also love the Charlotte Tilbury one. So these are all the products that I hated when I first got them. But now they have grown on me and I love them. I was also thinking about doing another video where it's kind of the opposite, where I talk about products that I loved at first and now I just don't like because I realized that I have a drawer full of those. So if you wanna see that, let me know down in the comments. But also let me know in the comments what products you hated at first, but now you love. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe on your way out. I would love to see you again. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.